evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Bo Leng. And I'm Raymond Yuan. Curious look at tonight's top stories. Fans left disappointed after tickets for World Cup qualifier snapped up in two hours. Education chief stands firm on TSA and turns down invitation to public hearing. Presidents of China and Taiwan set to meet for the first time since 1949. Hong Kong Football Association scored an own goal today, according to fans, after elderly and student punters were left without a ticket for the big match against China. They claimed they were misled about how many tickets were on offer after they sold out in just a few hours. But the association is crying foul and blaming the media. Korean Young reports. Hundreds of students and elderly people flocked to Mongkok Stadium this morning to grab concessionary tickets for the FIFA World Cup qualifier between Hong Kong and China. Some football fans started queuing outside the venue yesterday afternoon. I'm excited and not tired at all, said the student, who was the first to get a ticket. But a few in the queue were not feeling well and needed medical help. And later, many were disappointed after the discount tickets were snapped up in two hours. They were angry at the Hong Kong Football Association because there were supposed to be 1,000 tickets available. But HKFA chairman Brian Leung blamed the media for ignoring the fact that some concession tickets were sold in package deals or online. At the same time, the remaining 3,000 or so tickets were sold online. However, some punters complained that they had difficulty buying them because the system appeared to be congested even before sales started at 10 a.m. But others had no problems getting tickets and they were sold out around 12.30 p.m. There have been suggestions that the HKFA broadcast the game at other venues for those who couldn't get tickets. But Lung swiftly shot that idea down, saying the association is short-staffed. The HKFA had wanted to hold the match at the 40,000 capacity Hong Kong Stadium. But it's believed the turf there wouldn't have recovered in time after a series of rugby matches. So the association settled for Hong Kong Stadium, which only has 6,000 seats. About 2,000 tickets for the much-anticipated match on the 17th of November are reserved for away fans, the HKFA's package deals and hospitality tickets. Karen Yang, ATV News. Education Minister Eddie Ng is under fire after he turned down an invitation to attend a public hearing on controversial tests. He also rejected calls by lawmakers to scrap the tests, insisting they're the best way to gauge student abilities. Before lawmakers got down to any business today, LACHCO President Zhang yuk Singh was forced to ring the quorum bell, as less than half of the seats inside the chamber were filled. That caused a delay of more than four minutes. The Civic Party's Kenneth Chan then started with the recent debate about whether the Territory-Wide System Assessment, or TSA, should be scrapped, following widespread complaints from parents and teachers that it puts too much of a burden on young children. He asked Education Secretary Eddie Ng whether the TSA will be abolished for primary three students this year. Ng stood firm on the exam, saying it is the only objective gauge of the competency levels of students in languages and mathematics. He also denied that the TSA results will be used to grade or label schools as good or bad. Industrial sector lawmaker Lam Tai Fai, who chairs LACHCO's education panel, then invited Ng to a public hearing on the TSA on the 29th of this month. Ng said he would love to attend, but he will be out of town for private reasons. Leung Kwok Kong immediately responded by asking whether students can opt out of the TSA for private reasons. Mm, since the arrangement was made months in advance and asked for the hearing date to be more flexible so he could fit it in. After the session, Chan petitioned Ng mm outside the chamber but was ignored. Chan explained later he was inviting Ng mm to take the TSA himself. He doesn't really understand what the matter is about. He doesn't really want to understand what parents, teachers, pupils want this government not to do which is imposing TSA on P3 pupils. And also, surprisingly, as LACHCO's education panel will have a public hearing on the 29th of November, today he said he will be 
out of town. He says scrapping the TSA for primary three students is the first step of restoring real education at schools. It hasn't proven to be a very effective instrument to assess, evaluate uh, students and school performance altogether. Rather, it has created enormous, tremendous pressures on schools, on teachers, on children. So far, more than 43,000 people have signed an online petition to scrap the TSA, which is conducted on primary three and six as well as secondary three pupils. Two private schools have scrapped the TSA following the controversy last month, but all other government-subsidized schools are required to participate. The inquiry into the lead-contaminated water scandal continued for a third day. The deputy housing director said there was no cost-cutting when installing copper pipes at public estates. Deputy Housing Director Ada Fong headed into the former Court of Final Appeal for the third day of hearings about the lead-tainted water scandal. The contamination is being blamed on solder material used to join the pipes. Fong told the judge-led inquiry that cost wasn't an issue when choosing to use copper pipes instead of galvanised iron ones in public estates after 2005. The deputy director said it was thought that connecting copper pipes with soldering materials was more technical and practical. She said the switch to copper was made because the metal was widely used in the construction industry. Fung also echoed Housing Secretary Anthony Jones' comment that no one was aware that lead could possibly end up in the water supply until tests confirmed it was there in July. She said before the discovery, it was thought that the procedure for testing water quality was good enough. Fung admitted that soldering material was not tested before the scandal. Rejected candidate for the Hong Kong University Pro Vice Chancellor position, Johannes Chen, insisted today it's unusual for a school to apply for an injunction to ban the broadcast of secret recordings of private meetings. So it's unusual, at least it's very unusual for a public authority uh, like a university to obtain or try to apply for an injunction. So because after all, university is a place uh, for free flow of information, so it is rather rare for universities uh, to apply for an injunction to restrain the disclosure of information. Uh, and especially here is the University of Hong Kong itself, it's a properly funded authority, uh, and it has always been the major principle of this university of the maximum transparency. Customs says illegal cigarette smuggling cases are dropping, despite seizing the biggest haul in two years. Yesterday, custom officers seized 7.7 .7 million sticks of suspected illicit cigarettes, worth about $21 million. The seizure was from a cargo container in Kwai Chung that arrived in the city from Vietnam. Despite the huge haul, customs officers say they are seeing a downward trend. About 32 million illicit cigarettes were grabbed in 19 cases last year, but only 13 million in 16 cases so far. President Xi Jinping will meet Taiwan President Ma Yingzhou this weekend, the first time mainland and Taiwanese leaders will have met in 66 years. The pair are expected to exchange views on cross-strait issues. President Xi Jinping's meeting with Taiwan leader Ma Yingzhou this Saturday in Singapore will be the first such meeting since the Chinese Civil War ended in 1949. In a bid to build closer economic and political ties, the two sides are expected to focus on promoting the peaceful development of relations across the Taiwan Strait. However, no breakthrough agreements or joint statements are expected. Tensions appear to have been slowly thawing since Ma took office in 2008. His Kuomintang party is regarded as supporting closer ties with the mainland, the island's largest trading partner. The meeting comes just three months before Taiwan's presidential elections, and analysts suspect it's been time to boost the ruling party's chances in the race. However, the move is not popular with everyone. The opposition Democratic Progressive Party is concerned about how much influence Beijing will have over Taiwan. Angry demonstrators gathered outside Taiwan's parliament today to protest Xi and Ma's meeting. DPP lawmakers described the event as improper, coming so close to elections. 
Meanwhile, the U.S. says it welcomes any steps taken to help reduce tensions. The United States has a deep and abiding interest in peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. The benefits that stable and positive cross-strait ties have brought to both sides of the Taiwan Strait, the United States and the region have been enormous. Washington also called for the two sides to continue constructive dialogue based on dignity and respect. ASEAN nations are meeting in Malaysia, but the summit will not end with a joint statement. This comes amid rival claims in the South China Sea, and the country's defense minister said a consensus could not be reached. Arthur Okiola reports. Defense ministers from the Association of Southeast Asian Nations and some other countries met in Kuala Lumpur today. Defense Minister Chang Wang Chan and U.S. counterpart Ashton Carter were among those at the summit despite the U.S. and China not being member nations. As usual, territorial disputes are hot topics, as they are straining relations in the region with China, receiving the brunt of the blame. But host country Malaysia said due to a schedule change, there would be no signing ceremony or joint statement at the end of the forum. This came after China lobbied the other nations to drop any references to the issue, while the U.S. called for it to be included. Malaysia's defense minister said there would be no statement as an agreement can't be reached. What we sign in a joint declaration is not going to resolve the issue of duplicating claims, nor is it going to wish the vessels that are in the South China Sea away. So to dwell on the JD is not going to solve the real problem. The minister defended the summit's importance despite the lack of consensus. We have other channels for us to discuss these other issues at the level of the foreign ministers, at the level of the highest leadership uh, at the summit uh, in, in a couple of weeks' time. Carter said the lack of consensus could only mean the members were concerned about activities in the South China Sea and called on Beijing to be sincere in seeking a resolution. President Xi said in Washington, speaking for one claimant, that China is, quote, committed to respecting and upholding the freedom of navigation and overflight that countries enjoy according to international law, end quote. He pledged that China, as he said, does not intend to pursue militarization of outposts in the South China Sea. This is a positive statement, but we all must mean what we say. The meeting also comes a week after a U.S. warship entered waters near two artificial islands built by China. Arthur Akiola, ATV News. In other international news, four people in the U.S. state of Arkansas were injured after a small plane crash landed on a motorway. But first, a nine-year-old boy has been shot dead outside his grandmother's home in the city of Chicago. Here's Arthur Akiola. Police in Chicago are looking for the culprits behind the shooting of a nine-year-old boy. Tyshawn Lee was found dead in an alley near his grandmother's home, with multiple gunshot wounds in his head and back. There was an unknown number of individuals gathered in the alley prior to the shooting. Some type of argument or altercation ensued, which was followed by gunfire. I feel sad because it's a cruel community out here, and I just wish that it would stop. Stop killing and make peace with the world. It's not known whether the boy was specifically targeted. The killing comes amid calls for tighter gun control laws. However, Chicago has some of the strictest gun restrictions in the U.S. A plane steered by the former head of Walmart's U.S. operations crash-landed on a highway in Arkansas. The small aircraft crash-landed outside a high school after its oil system failed and a parachute was deployed. Bill Simon was flying to Waco, Texas, where he teaches a business class at a university. Three men on board the plane were taken to hospital, along with a woman whose truck was hit. Police in southern Florida were led on a high-speed chase by a driver going the wrong way on a motorway. The driver of a stolen white Chevy Tahoe whipped in and out of traffic, striking several cars, including two police vehicles, but no one was seriously hurt. He continued driving even after one of his back tires was taken out and shredded away. After about an hour, police cornered the vehicle in Miami Gardens and arrested the driver. The 15-year-old suspect was taken into custody and faces charges of grand theft auto, aggravated assault, and driving without a valid license. Arthur Riccola, ATV News. 
turning 